Hello, my name is Larry Martin and I'm a Solutions Consultant with Beyond 20. Today I'm going to show you how to get around the go-to record action um, inside of ShareWell. Um, if you've ever tried to do something like receive multiple pieces of hardware on an order or create a bunch of tickets or other items inside the system using a one step that has a go-to action. Um, stepping through children or whatever else, but you have that go-to action that will bring you back um, any number of times. You know that that has a limit of uh, 30 seconds or however many records it can accomplish in that 30 second time frame. Now ShareWell did that to prevent you from creating loops and locking up your system and causing havoc. But there are times when we actually need to do things that we don't have enough time to do in that go-to action step. So what I'm going to show you today is a way to work around this. Now I'm going to re-caution. Be careful that you do not get yourself into a loop where you hang your system up and it's just uh, constantly doing this work because it can create real problems with your system. So you want to be very careful with the limiters and making sure that you build it correctly. Um, but there is a valid need for it, so I decided to go ahead and show you one way that you can work around that issue. In this case, um, for demo purposes, I'm going to pretend like we're doing like ordering and receiving, and we're a large enterprise and we often order thousands of CIs at a time. Well, when we receive those CIs, we want to create records, um, and you know, it's going to be tedious to go in and update each individual record. But if we can create the placeholder record, then we can then go in and update something on each of those, like the serial number with a barcode scanner or whatever, and then let our uh, configuration tool or our uh, inventorying tool come back, match up with that serial number, and then populate the rest of the data. So even if you're a large organization working with thousands of devices at a time, we can significantly cut down on the amount of work that you have to do um, if you're not just going to let your CI or your inventorying tool create those CIs for you. And then there are any number of reasons that you might need to create multiple records. CIs aren't the only place. Uh, you could have a special object of some sort in your environment where you just need the ability to create 50, 100, 1,000 records. There are a couple parts to this. Um, the very first thing is that we need to create a table in essence that is nothing more than a list of numbers one through X. X can be a thousand, X can be a hundred thousand, whatever you need that to be because we're going to use this to set our limits. When we have uh, nine then we're going to create nine of whatevers. In my demo I'm going to create computer objects. If we pick 16, then we will create 16 of those. So we need numbers, and I'm just referring to it as a counter, and I've called my table go to action replacement. And this way, whatever the number of items that I want to do, as long as that number exists in this table in sequential order, then that's how many of that record type will create. Notice I am limiting myself to maximum of 20. Now, in general, 20 items, a uh, go to action in a one step will have no problem going through and creating 20 computer CIs the way I'm doing it using this table. But I'm not going to sit here, uh, have you sit here and watch it create 500 records. Um, you just need the proof of concept so that you can determine when you might need to use this or not. So this is our counter. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and open my existing blueprint. I'll tell you a couple things about this. So I created the table. It's nothing more than a table with numbers one through whatever. If you're going to have a large number of numbers over, say, um, some amount, you might want to do an Excel sheet uh, or a CSV file. 
and just use Excel functions to populate one through X and then you can do a data import and import that data into that table. The next thing is um, I built it as a major object because we need to build a relationship but you can create it as a supporting object um, uh, just be at a major first to create your relationship and then demote it back to supporting. Uh, if you're not aware of how then just edit business object business object properties and change it from major to supporting but when you do make sure it um, has the ability to show up in one steps if you need to etc. Uh, but for what we're using this object for I'm just going to leave it as a major. The relationship that we need to build is a I call this create many CIs so my create many CIs links to the go to action replacement table and that relationship is simply a links one to many uh, that's why it needs to be a major so I can modify links to many my child is the go to action replacement table which has the numbers one through X my link we're gonna set up a custom link and our constraints going to be where the field counter in that table is less or equal to the quantity of items that I want to create. So this would be like your counter expression in a go to action where you're decrementing by one. Um, in this case, I've got a quantity field, and I'm going to plug in a number one through 20, and that's how many CIs we're going to create because this relationship is going to link me to that number 20 because I put 20 in the quantity field. It's going to link me to the number 14 if I put 14 in the quantity field. Then in our advanced, the others are fine as they are. Just load immediately so that the relationship's loaded. Uh, once we have our relationship, so I'm going to create CIs. I've got a couple default fields, but I want to bring uh, not ring, but quantity is how many CIs I'm going to create. Type, I already know I'm doing computers, so this is just going to let me choose whether it's a laptop or workstation based on my validation against the CI asset type, asset type field, where the configuration item type equals config computer. So this way I can do laptops or workstations. Then OS is a free text field. I did this to give you uh, more visibility into the ways that you can use different fields on a form to then populate data within the CIs to create your stub record. Again, it doesn't have to be against CIs. You may have a, your own object of some sort where you need to create multiples. That's fine. And then we have a create button. On this create button, we have a one step. This one step is going to grab the quantity field and store that in a stored value. I can't use a variable here. I need to use a stored value, and I'll show you why in a minute. My OS is just the value of that OS field. My type is just a variable with the type field. Then I'm going to step through children. This is why I need the stored value. I cannot put a variable into the value on this custom expression. So what this says is I'm going to step through children and I'm going to reload the data in the relationship and I'm only going to run this where the go to action replacement counter number is less or equal to the CI quantity. So even though my relationship is linking only 1 through 14 or 1 through 20, I now need to limit it to what that number is as well. So my relationship's given me the ability to go up to 20. This limiter prevents me from going over 20. So once I have this expression set up, I am simply going to create a new business object. And this is like any other uh, create business object, and I'm only filling in a few fields. My asset status, I'm hard coding to in stock. My computer type is going to be that variable and then my operating system is the other variable. Once I'm out of that, then I'm going to execute a command for a search of CIs created today. Now I could go further with this and add an additional field on my CIs that say um, has been updated and then put a link on the I want to or a button on the CI that says 
Um, click here when you're done updating the data and then refresh this search so that the search ignores any that have actually been completed. Uh, but that's a pretty, should be something that most people understand. If not, we can always dive into that deeper later. Um, but anyway, I'm going to return the CIs that were created today without any kind of limiting factor to prevent me from seeing ones that I've already updated manually beyond just a simple creation. So again, we've got our step through children. We're limiting it where the counter number, say 20, is less or equal to our quantity. And this is going to give us the ability to create X number of devices and do so even if um, a go-to action would have errored out. So you would publish, I'm just going to close. And now in my rich client, I, since it's a major, I left it on the new. So I'm going to go to create many CIs. And I'm going to say, let's create five. Imagine that's 500. And I want to create five laptops with the OS of my OS. I don't believe we're validating. So I'm going to hit create. I'm not going to save the Create Mini CIs in this case. And there I have five laptop records. They are status in stock as soon as the record opens. It's a laptop. Here's the asset tag. The OS is my OS. And I did not fill out any other information, but um, there you have it. So just for, I'm going to go ahead and file, delete all. I'm going to go back to my new Create Mini CIs. And this time I'm going to build 18 workstations. And the OS is going to be Windows 10. Create. Again, I'm not going to save this record because it's just a data entry form. And I have 18 workstation records. So since we're not going to run into a timeout um, with the go-to action, this will work to create a variable number of items. Uh, keep in mind that if you're looking at creating like thousands, you might want to reconsider um, and do like a data import or just be aware that the higher the number that you're creating your system is going to look possibly look like it's hanging and you just have to like it let it work through the process anyhow i hope you found the information that i provided here useful please subscribe to our youtube channel we produce these videos every week to help you learn more about the system and show you how to do things if you have questions feel free to leave a comment in the channel tweet us email us and we will respond and or create a video showing you how to do what you best. Thank you.